we review the Paddy Byrne Memorial Sweepstake from Tralee and the semi-finals of the Texicloth Puppy Derby from Newbridge. Plus, Shelburne Park hosts the launch of the PaddyPower.com Irish Greyhound Derby. But first, it's over to Harold's Cross for the Egan Catering Harold's Cross Oaks. Just a matter of weeks ago, the Irish Oaks champion was crowned. This time on Harold's Cross, it's the Egan Catering Harold's Cross Oaks. It's been a great competition, some tremendous early pace in it. All six finalists can scorch to the corner. The favourite is Don's Beauty in Trap 1, owned by Michael Walsh from Nocknagoshal, who tasted Derby glory just a few years ago. But the dangers are mighty. In six, Glencora. In five, Glen Shane bonus with that brilliant early pace. Four, It's Awesome, flew to the bend in the semi-final. Leave no chalk in three, the bookmakers know what that means. And in two is Lemon Mandy. A great race in prospect, but Don's Beauty goes to traps, the favourite. The runners now parading for our feature race, the final of their Egan Catering Harold's Cross Oaks. Winner here to receive €5,000. In trap one, Don's Beauty, owned by Michael Walsh, trained by Francie Murray, a daughter of Top Poncho and Don's Pride, the favourite for this one. She's very well drawn on the inside, she can go up fast and stays strongly. Number two is Lemon Mandy, owned by Tom Lennon, daughter of Rowan Oakey and Lemon Holly, a very good performer, consistent, not the fastest starter normally, stays strongly. In three, we have Leave No Chalk, owned by Lindsay Monarawella from Navin, trained by Ollie Bray, a daughter of vintage Prince and Denise Dream. Leave No Chalk can either fly out or she can come from behind, a very pacey lady. In trap four, we have It's Awesome, owned by Aidan Roach and trained by Aidan in Wexford, a daughter of Rowan Oakey and Bat Street Linda. Not the fastest starter, but brilliant early pace. And number five here is Glen Shane Bonus, owned by Frank Carson from Tyrone, a daughter of Staplers Joe and Farrow Post, flying early pacer, prefers an inside draw and will be heading towards the inside on the run to the bend. And finally in six we have Glen Cora, owned by Liam Curley from Offaly, a daughter of Spiral Nikita and Glen Lair. Difficult to see this one out of the placing, she has great early pace and really motors down the back straight. The hair's on its way for the final of the Egan Catering Harold's Cross Oaks. €5,000 for the winner. In one, Don's Beauty the favourite. Two is Lemon Mandy. Three, Leave No Chalk. Four, It's Awesome. Five, Glen Shane. Bonus and six, Glen Cora. Hair behind the traps. What will make it in front? Level start number three is out well. Leave No Chalk on number six, Glen Cora. Racing to the bend on the inside. Leave No Chalk on the outside. Glen Cora sweeps to the front. It's number six, Glen Cora. Going on by a few lengths from number three, Leave No Chalk. Number one, the favourite is back in third. That's Don's Beauty. Heading towards the third bend and number six, Glen Cora in front. But Leave No Chalk is closing. She's a strong finisher. It's six in front, Glen Cora. Leave No Chalk is closing. Off the final bend. It's six from three. Coming up the straight, Glen Cora with Leave No Chalk putting in a big run. Oh, it's one for the judge. Glen Cora perhaps just from Leave No Chalk, but it's desperately close. And the result of the Egan Catering Harold's Cross Oaks, so close, but number six, Glen Cora the winner from number three, Leave No Chalk, and number one, Don's Beauty in third. Well, what a thrilling finish to the final of the Egan Catering Oaks. And with the winning owner, breeder and trainer, Liam Curley. What a brilliant bitch, Liam. Thanks, Ian. It's about time. When she flashed out of trap six, you, you must have thought all your birthdays came at once. Well, I did, but she's a wide runner and uh, I'd be a little bit worried always coming home. And I'd say Ollie Bray's bitch went, went second down the back and I knew that she'd done 28, 60 around here. So she wasn't going to give in too easy, you know. Of course, she was the strongest staying bitch in the race, the second one, but well, yeah, it was, yeah. really shows how what a good bitch she is. She really sticked well, on well, well. Tonight was the first bitch she got a break right here. She was breaking better in Shelburne, but tonight she broke in Harris Cross. So what she did, that was a, it was a right night to break. <laughs> she needed to. I know yeah. you bred her yourself. It's from a brilliant damn line. Well, they have been good to me, yeah. They have been good to me, yeah. It stems all the way back to the great Glen Ivy. It does, yeah, yeah. And I've been mean, uh, up to now, we had injected probably a lot of early pace, but we're probably beating maybe a bit more for stamina now, even though this lady doesn't really stay that well. But uh, beaten by Spurl Nikita, she should breed dogs that will stay by 50 hours anyhow. Yeah? You'll continue to race her, but no doubt oh, breeding, yeah, no breeding doubt. is the, well, the big future for her. She's going to race for another year at least anyhow. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the, uh, the Oaks this time next year? Well, please God, maybe the one in Shelburne Park will be the one we'll be getting that too, you know? Bookmakers giving money away? You better believe it. Cattle Curly tells us more. We have achieved sponsorship second only to the Paddy Power Derby in Shelburne Park. 
and I mean that is a contribution from the bookmakers and a contribution from uh, from the management in Harris Cross. If I could just take a moment to explain to you what has happened. Each bookmaker in Harles Cross has donated 100 euros per week on top of their pitch fees. We have 13 books in Harles Cross, that's a total of 1,300 euros. We are matching that in Harles Cross with another 1,300 euros, giving us a total of 26. Into a pool of four weeks, that gives us a pool of 10,000 euros. We are going to be running through the generosity, the loyalty and the good-hearted thinking of the bookmakers we are going to be running an event in Harlow's Cross every three to four weeks for ten thousand euros. Yeah, well, the call is a great idea. He has, you know, for trying to get Harlow's Cross on the road. Like Harlow's Cross is very unfair competition against Shelburne. The same bookmakers are in Harlow's Cross in Shelburne, and it's handier for the punters to get in touch. So I would hope that we get the best dogs in the country to go to Harlow's Cross. There's going to be a ten thousand pound race every month, and dogs that maybe don't get five fifty certainly have a great chance because the competition is going to be over various distances and we hope to bring in dogs from England and the management are going to agree to pay for the bringing in the dogs and bring in the owners if they don't collect they pay their expenses you know, I mean it's fabulous it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great invention in, in, into the uh, <coughs> track it should, it should make a huge difference at the finish in my opinion he sold uh, ice to the Eskimos so which is no problem to him now but uh, I think it's a good idea because uh, the Gary Outstakes outlived his usefulness. Well it's a great promotion uh, organised by the uh, Cottle Curley to promote Greyhound Racing in uh, Harlan's Cross and we all agree that it's a good idea and we hope it's a success. It's a big investment for Harlan's Cross track and the bootmakers and we hope it turns out successful for everybody, for Greyhound Racing in uh, its entirety. We have asked two of the bookmakers to represent the 13 in Harles Cross to sit down along with the management in Harles Cross and figure out each month, preceding each month, what event uh, they, they, they want to go for in this particular year. It could be a sprint, it could be a 750, they've even talked about 830. But we now have a unique situation insofar as we have the bookmakers involved. The Kingdom Greyhound Stadium here in Chile is the venue for the biggest final of the weekend. It's the final of the 6,000 euro Paddy Byrne Memorial 550. And with Anamore Billy surprisingly beaten at the semi-final stage, we have a new favourite, and that's Mount Leader Rolf. First in the picture we have the red jacket of Killerisk Lad. This is owned by the Killerisk Syndicate here in Tralee, care of Morris Vile. And this is a son of Vintage Prince and Carney's Porter. Next up we have the blue jacket of Mount Leader Rolf, unbeaten to date in the competition. This one owned and trained in Mill Street by Daniel O'Mahony. It's a son of Smooth Rumble and Mount Leader Diva. Next we have Haste G Back, the Limerick Challenger, owned by Mary Carling, Croom County Limerick and trained by Nielus O'Connell. It won last weekend in a time of 30.41. Running from box four we have Broad Mill One. This one owned and trained in Tralee County Kerry by Esther Keane and is a son of Tom's the Best and Signal Power. In the orange jacket tonight we have Computer Analyst. This one owned by Ned Scannon in Glen County Limerick and trained by Joe Dowling. It's a son of Vintage Prince and Carney's Porter. And finally, on to Step Aside Rose, this one owned in Temple Moor by Clarissa Bohan and trained by Timothy O'Reardon. This bitch is a daughter of Top Honcho and Step and Go. All set so for the big final here in Tralee. In one, Killerisk Lad. Two, Mount Leader Rolf. Hasty Back is in three. Broadmill One runs in four. Computer Analyst is in five. And Step Aside Rose runs from trap six to Mount Leader Rolf. The strong favourite here, and they're away, and out very smartly is four. That's Broadmill one, but in front it's Mount Leader Rolf, and he leads at the bend. It will be difficult to beat at this stage. Down the back straight they go, and challenging for second, but just bumped away is Broadmill one. Way out in front, Mount Leader Rolf. Step aside, Rose has moved into second, and Killer is glad now is up into third. And as they approach the final turn, it's Mount Leader Rolf, the favourite that's going to oblige here, I think. And as they come up towards the line, it's Mount Leader Rolf, followed home by Step Aside Rose, and Killer is glad takes third. The complete results now of this, the final of the Paddy Barn Memorial sweepstake. The winner, Mount Leader Rolf, in second, Step Aside Rose, and third, Killer Lad. The winning time, 29.85. Construction.
a most impressive winner here at the Kingdom Greyhound Stadium in Tralee in Mount Leader Ralph and the owner and trainer of course from Mill Street in County Cork uh, well known here in Tralee uh, Donny a splendid success very happy with the win yeah humbly delighted um, uh, being unbeaten to the final uh, made it very exciting for me and put a lot of pressure on me but he's a dog of lovely temperament uh, pleasure to train uh, no problems and he did it all himself he's just he's just a natural a natural type of dog you, you like to boast on when you're fighting that you have that you're so good or so not the dog has it he's a, he's a beautiful animal and, he, and he's a he's like he's like something santa claus would send you you know he's like the perfect woman perfect dog and once he broke so well and led into that opening bend i'm sure you had no fears about him winning you well uh, as an owner as an owner and the older you get, I suppose it gets tougher. You're never satisfied. If you're five in front, you want to be ten. And if you're ten, you want to be twenty. Uh, you, you know, you think of certain things. Will he stay tonight? Uh, anything. But you just, you just want to see him going and going and rolling on. And it was delightful. From your own point of view, you've kept the same line of breeding down through the years. Uh, that's uh, something unusual in itself. Yeah, I, I acquired the line in 1972. And it was an established line at that stage. The dam line was a Yanka boy, Silver Hope. And um, I've taken the line from there, and I have been com fairly competitive, thank God, uh, since then. With me now is the principal sponsor of tonight's feature race, Centrally, Patsy Byrne. Uh, Patsy, at this stage, it's been a, a long association for yourself here with uh, Trilly. Oh, it is, it's our local track here, and uh, a new club I was a great dog, man, Paddy Budden. He died in 1980, I think, or 81, and since then we've been doing the race, and we're, we're delighted to be able to do it. There's been some great winners out of here. You must be very impressed with the winner that we had here tonight, Mount Leader Rolf. Oh, well, I was indeed, and it was great to see Johnny Mahoney coming back and winning. He's a great dog, man. Yeah, he ran very well, he popped out and did his job very well. Now here at home in Ireland, it's uh, Derby time, of course, cool performance won it uh, for you last year. That was a very special night for you. Oh, it was a great night. We had him in England the year before and I bought a half share off of Mick Leeson and then he got injured and he got to the final last year and we won, he hope, and it was great to see him getting up on the line. The Irish Derby is very good. There's great prize money here and they do a great job in Shelburne, so it'll be great for whoever wins it. I'm sure they'll have a great time. And what a cool performance now. Where is he? Cool performance is a stud at Sean Box. Uh, he was at stud actually in the Interman from, he, he was off for here and he went to stud and he had a winner here, I'm glad you asked that question, he had a winner here during the week, he had done 29-17 uh, first run which is very good. Join us after the break for the semi-finals of the Texacloth Puppy Derby from Newbridge and the PaddyPower.com Irish Greyhound Derby launch. A very large crowd turned out at Newbridge last Friday for the semi-finals of the Texas Cloth Newbridge Poppy Derby. They really enjoyed themselves whining and dining and plenty of action too in the betting ring. On the first semi-final, dogs going to traps where the favourites were number four Balscadden Boy and number six Cabbage White. In one, Nula's Quest at four to one. Number two, La Young Locking Bar at ten to one. Number three, Magna Replay at fives. Number four, Balscadden Boy, two to one joint favourite. Trap 5, Glensky Lark at 10 to 1, and in 6, Cabbage White, the other 2 to 1 joint favourite. The hair coming up behind the traps for the off, and on the inside, number 5 showing well now on the outside, Glensky Lark, with number 6, Cabbage White, into the bend. A lot of trouble in behind. Oh, number 2 took a terrible fall, Young Lock and Bar. A lot of trouble, just two dogs emerged from it. Number 5, Glensky Lark, left in front. Clear here from number 4, Balscadden Boy in second. These are well clear. Number 6, Cabbage White making ground into the third bend, but still well adrift of the pace is number five, Glensky Lark in front from number four, Balscadden Boy. Six, Cabbage White making ground in behind, but it's Glensky Lark out front, is led all the way, holding on from number four, Balscadden Boy. Quite an exciting race there, but what a tumble there was at that first bend. It really removed four dogs out of the reckoning, but number six ran on very well to take third place. And the result of that first semi-final, the winner was number five, Glensky Lark, joined by Mary Delmer, second number four, Balscadden Boy, and third number six, Cabbage White, the time 29.28. Well, the second semi-final, another very exciting contest in this one, where number six, Cool Gamble, the seven to four favorite locally owned. In trap one, Killed of Dawn at eight to one. Number two, Mustang Messiah at five to two. Three, Beat the World at five to one. Four, Clover Hare at three to one. 
in five, China Jet at six to one, and the favourite, Cool Gamble, running from six, seven to four favourite, owned by Ann Cox. Early pace is what Cool Gamble is noted for, and there he is, fast away, a bit of trouble inside him, and it's Cool Gamble number six, leading to the bend from number two, Mustang Messiah in second. Number one, Kill Dove down his third, but heading into the back straight, it's Cool Gamble going on by three lengths, four lengths from Mustang Messiah. Number one, Kill Dove down his third and beat the world in fourth. Onto the second last corner, it's still Cool Gamble with a lead of two and a half lengths from Mustang Messiah in second. These are clear of number one, Kill Dove down, who's staying on well in third, but it's number six, Cool Gamble coming to the line, holding on from Mustang Messiah and killed of dawn in third well cool gamble is locally owned would be a very popular winner should he win the final and he's doing things very nicely indeed leading all the way there to win that semi-final the result number six cool gamble the winner the seven to four favorite second was number two mustang messiah and third number one killed of dawn the time 28 83 afterwards the trap draw was made for the final and it resulted in trap one mustang messiah two killed of dawn Three, Cabbage White, four, Balscadden Boy, five, Glensky Lark, and six, Cool Gamble. There were many derby clues at Shelburne on Saturday night. First of all, we had the trial session before racing, and there was a great run from Bypass Byway over 525 yards, wearing the five jacket, but coming out of trap six, he was very impressive, going around in 28-49, this champion stakes finalist. But there was huge interest too in the English challenger Loz's Dream, trained by Derek Knight, making his first visit to Shelburne Park and doing 30-14 for the 550 yards. A fine run from this dog who won the Sussex Cup last week in England and he's going to be one of the major fancies for the derby. Later in the night, of course, we had the chance of watching the Scottish Derby winner in action, Priceless Rebel. Here now coming behind the traps, and away they go. And he's out quite well from three, Priceless Rebel. Showing in front on the run to the bend. Number one, Grayson and Poppy going up well on the inside. But it's Priceless Rebel in front around the bend. Stretching out now as he hits the second bend. It's Priceless Rebel from number five, Courage Prince in second. Number six, Sean Aspiral is third. And then number one, Graislin Poppy. Heading to the third and it's Priceless Rebel out front. The Scottish Derby winner, four clear from number five, Courage Prince in second. Sean Aspiral in third, but there's only one dog in this one. It's Priceless Rebel storming up the straight here to win this one. He's very impressive, winning from number five, Courage Prince in second. With number four, Dale Inferno third in a time of 30.08. Well, Jay, good punter here in Shelburne Park. How do you fancy for the derby? Um, uh, Droopy Sagacy, I, I fancy. I really fancy him. He won a sprint here under 19 seconds. Uh, he's 25, 28 to 1. I tried to get 33 to 1 myself the other day with Ladbrokes. They have it on the paper, but they don't want to lay it at 33. That's Ladbrokes, OK? But I think the most disappointing thing is about the derby this year is people who want to enter their dog and have paid their 300 quid, 300 euro, I know they're not going to get a run. So I think the farmer had wanted to be changed next year. It'll be only one more week, and everybody who was want to have run the dog in the derby has been entitled to run. Well, Jim, derby coming up. What do you fancy for the derby? Uh, Larry Dunn's dog, Mui. Mui, yeah, and, and Bay, Bay, Bay Pass Bayway for Lolly Bray. Bay Pass Bayway on 20 and 45 there tonight. Like, if he gets a run at all, I think it'll, be, it'll give it a good show. Well, first and foremost, I've fancied Lake Lake Show all along. I'm 60 years over 60 years ago from Greyhound Racing and he is one of the fastest ever I've seen and strongest. He's not the best tracker now. Uh, you'll get better trackers, but there's no none greater than him and Dave Sherburn's Park Spain Straits. And I fancy lately late show to reach the final and give back six, I fancy him strongly. And then I, I think Price's Little Rebel is coming back to form as well. And he's a tremendous dog too. And with a bit of luck, he'll, he'll be there too. They're my two prime fancies for the derbies. I don't know much, so much about the droopies. They're, they're very strong challengers. But there's a lot of upcoming good dogs there. And it's, it's a tremendous derby to look forward to. Yes, plenty to look forward to. The draw for the PaddyPower.com Irish Derby was made at Shelburne Park on Monday. A high-profile event, and charity will benefit in a big way from this one. Lots of high-profile people, well-known personalities, greyhound owners and trainers were there and they witnessed a very interesting draw. Well, Paul, the derby draw, how, do, how does it suit you? Um, it doesn't suit us that well, but I mean, in fairness to late, late, a moving customer, they have met on umpteen occasions before, and up to now they've always decided to uh, kind of avoid one another in the race, so hopefully they'll do the same again. Uh, it's tricky, um, larking about Drew Price's rebel one beside the other, that's always dangerous when kind of companions are drawn side by side. Manic Ranger, trapped two as a wide seed. Um, 
It's tough, but it's going to be tough. It's going to be a great derby. We're really looking forward to the challenge. Our dogs are well. And um, this is what we've been gearing for all year long. And a wee bit of luck, and the old fella still put a lot of units in his place. I'm oh, very pleased with the draw, Michael. Uh, we got two drawn in the one heat, but uh, we've got trap draws, and I don't think they'll bother each other. Uh, Active Man has got drawn trap six, he loves that trap, and Lip Pal Sammy's drawn in trap three, and he loves that trap as well. So, in all, we've done quite well in the draw. The tough heats, there's a lot of tough heats in it, but uh, I have done reasonably well. What do you fancy to win the derby? I'll stick my neck on the block and say Priceless Rebel would be one they'll all have to go and beat. And Jet Spray, I think, is a very strong running type of dog. We're drawn in against him. Um, we'll do our best to beat him on uh, Saturday and just take our chance from there. Well, Paul, the derby, the prices. Has arrived at last. Um, Priceless Rebel as our new favourite, 10 to 1, was 14 to 1, but that was gleefully accepted yesterday afternoon. Late, late show, you know we've doubled the ante. If he wins it, it's 300,000 euro, but we're still pushed him out slightly in the betting, 12 to 1. 14 to 1, Jet Spray, 16 to 1, Loz's Dream, a load on 20s and 25s, and we have laid some really juicy bets. I'm just looking through our uh, anti post book. Jet Spray, 33,000 to 1, we've laid him to lose 80k. Bold Mossy, 33,000 to 1 each way, a lose over 60k. Larking about 40,000 to 1, Sterling, that hurts, 33 to 1 now. It's wide, wide open, Michael. Like yourself, I don't know where to even begin to pick the winner of this derby. It's fascinating. Roll on Thursday. Time now to look ahead to the fixtures, and on Thursday, it's the first round of the PaddyPower.com Irish Derby from Shelburne Park. Then at Cork, it's the first round of the Bank of Ireland stake worth 15,000 euro. It's the final of the Pascal Taggart Stake from Tralee, and from Enniscorthy, the final of the Turner Memorial Ledger. At Enniscorthy also, it's the final of the Eddie Murner Memorial Tri Distance. On Friday, Newbridge hosts the 10,000 euro Texaclass Newbridge Puppy Derby final, and at Harold's Cross, it's the final of the Harold's Cross 2920 Stake. Then on Saturday, the first round of the PaddyPower.com Irish Derby, of course, from Shelburne Park. And from Waterford, it's the semi-finals of the Waterford Crystal Open 550 and Cork, the semi-finals of the Heineken 575. Then on to Tuesday, from Yawl, it's the Cashman Bookmakers Open 700 semi-finals. Join us next week for those finals in Newbridge and Waterford. Highlights of the first rounds of the PaddyPower.com Irish Greyhound Derby and the Irish Greyhound Board's Michael Foley Talks Numbers. For further information on Irish Greyhound racing, ownership and syndication, visit our website at www.igb.ie or email us at admin at igb.ie.